everyone, Ashley with Amare. So today we're gonna talk about all the supplies you need post-op. So every surgery is different and you're gonna need different supplies for every surgery. Now, let me start this off by saying, guys, what your doctor gives you, you should be building off of that. You shouldn't just be like, all right, well, my doctor told me to use this, so I'm just gonna use this and that's it. No, 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 no. When you buy a pair of Louboutins, right? You can put the little red sticker on the bottom so that the bottom doesn't get wiped off. You can put inserts in them so that they're more comfortable. You should be doing the same thing with your body post-op. You wanna take care of this investment, right? So lipo, tummy tuck, BBL, no matter what facelift surgery, breast implants, no matter what it is, you're going to need a base of recovery supplies. So yes, that base is the same for all of them, but varying on what surgery you had, which we're gonna go into, is what you need for that surgery that's gonna help. So what your doctor usually gives you is a garment, maybe, sometimes. Um, your antibiotics, which are medicine and nausea stuff, like all that stuff, That that's all them, right? Um, your drains, if you have drains from a tummy tuck or from lipo or something like that, again, that's all them. Um, teaching you how to take care of that. They don't usually do like a lot to teach you how to take care of that. We'll get into that in a different video on drains. I actually have one on drains. Um, but that's all them. All the medical stuff is them. Now, when you get stitches, they tell you either use this antibiotic ointment or they put steri strips over them or they tell you don't touch it or they give you instructions to like wash with and stuff like that. We don't ever wanna change what your doctor tells you. We wanna build off of that and add things that are going to help with the recovery. So again, no matter what surgery you had, there is a base that you need to take care of. So let's start with um, Arnica because it's like the biggest thing that everybody talks about, right? Doctors will suggest Arnica. Sometimes they'll give you like the little white pellets or they'll tell you go get Arnica, it helps. Or if you guys are getting surgery in Miami, if you guys are getting surgery in DR, if you're getting it done anywhere where your doctor is like really hands off with the post-op, you really should be getting your supplies from a reputable source. Do not go on Amazon. Do not play Russian roulette with your supplies and your surgery from Amazon. I say it all the time. So I know I have tons of videos where I talk about each product specifically. This video is gonna talk about all of them and how you use them and what your setup should be. So that being said, um, starting with the Arnica, you guys cannot use store-bought Arnica. Store-bought Arnica is not going to be strong enough for your surgery post-op. Also, store-bought Arnica, Arnicare, Arnagel, the Bioron Arnica, the white tube. First of all, there's not gonna be enough of that to use it. How do we use it? So Arnica is absorbed transdermally, which means through the skin. Um, and it helps with bruising, Arnica specifically, and it helps with like the discoloration and a little bit of the soreness. But it's not gonna heal the broken tissue and it's not gonna really do a lot for your swelling at all, honestly. It's gonna take away the bruising and the discoloration, but your swelling's not gonna go down because of the Arnica, that's not how that works. So our post-op cream has Arnica in it. It actually has two parts of Arnica. So a lot of things that have Arnica in it is just like an oil or like a little bit of Arnica. It's not the actual parts of the plant. Our cream has the actual parts of the Arnica plant in it that help take down the swelling as well as the bruising and the broken tissue and all that. Now our cream also has calendula, echinacea, rosemary, thyme, lemongrass, a bunch of other stuff, aloe, um, it's, it's on the shop page, the list of stuff that's in there. And it actually tells you what each of those things does. So our cream is called a topical analgesic. So what does that mean? It means it stops pain at the skin, at the site that you actually put it on. So there's no menthol, there's nothing like that. It's safe post-op. Um, you shouldn't be putting it on your incisions. Obviously don't put it near an open wound, but using it to treat your skin, to get the swelling down, to get the broken tissue down, to get the bruising down, to get the pain and soreness. So you guys have pain post-op, but then you have soreness where your skin feels like it was beat with a baseball bat this cream gets rid of that now it's not like the pain meds that kind of just turn your brain off from feeling the pain it actually stops the pain and heals it at that place that you put the arnica so that being said like i said in the arnica video you want to use it all over your body not just in the area you had surgery not just in the area that's bruised because the more skin you cover the more of those herbs you're going to get so arnica first thing make sure you're getting proper Arnica, not the store bought stuff. It's not gonna be good for post-op strength. So there's that. Um, 
Soap and wound care. So when you're talking about taking care of your stitches, right? So lipo, tummy tuck, BBL, you're gonna have incisions. A lot of the times your incisions are either dissolvable or your doctor's taking them out. What they give you at the doctor's office is an antibiotic ointment or an antibacterial ointment, something that's going to make sure it doesn't get infected. That's not gonna help it heal faster. That's not gonna prevent scarring. That's going to help make sure it doesn't get infected and that it stays clean. Now, here's the problem with that. A lot of those ointments keep your incision wet. Even worst case scenario than that, they don't give you anything or they tell you to go use Neosporin, Bacitracin, or Vaseline. Those things will also keep you wet. So our post-op wound care can be mixed with your antibiotic ointment to create a protective seal, which in the video about that post-op wound care I show you, it creates like a protective seal over your incision so that it protects it and it keeps it clean and dry, but you can also mix that with your antibacterial, antibiotic ointment, whatever the doctor gives you, so you can use both. Again, we build off of whatever they tell us. We don't completely negate them in any way. So that stuff for helping dissolve your, stitch, your stitches and incisions faster, whatever little things you got in there, for making sure that the skin around your incisions stays calm and healthy, for protecting it, but also healing it from the inside out. Neosporin, Vaseline, Bacitracin sit on top of your skin and they do create some sort of like barrier, but they're not gonna get in there and heal the cut from the inside out. Our stuff does, it actually gets in there and starts making new skin underneath so that your body doesn't have to make that new skin so that you're not scarring as bad. So the best way to treat scars is to prevent them from even happening to begin with. So we don't have to spend money on creams or lightning or any of that stuff. So that wound care for all of your little incision sites. Now, big thing, garment burn. When you have a giant like patch on your side or when you have like, um, like a rash or if you're missing a chunk of skin or things like that, other wounds that are happening with surgery, that stuff works for. Now, a lot of times your doctor won't give you anything for that or tell you what to do. I am telling you, post-op wound care will help with that because it is a post-op wound, even if it's not an incision site. So that's also really good for that. So the Arnica, the wound care, now let's talk about the soap. This is a big one. This is like the number one thing. You guys can use gallons of wound care. You can use gallons of Arnica cream. You can do all of that, right? If you are constantly drying out your body, making your skin fragile, if you're flaking like crazy post-op, if you're itching like crazy post-op, you need a proper post-op soap. Now the soap that we have is meant for after plastic surgery. It's made by a recovery company for this reason. Now, it has Arnica in it, which as we know, Arnica is absorbed very well through the skin to help with the soreness and the pain and stuff like that. It also has aloe to coat your skin to make sure that it's staying healthy in your garment, which you should be in 24 seven. So your skin's not breathing as much. So you need to be using something that's gonna keep it hydrated without keeping it wet and sticky. So that wash, is what does that. It's surfactants, so it cleans everything and it hydrates without keeping you sticky or wet, making sure that your skin isn't going to flake. Now, what does the doctor usually tell you to use post-op for soap? Dial, Dove, Hippocleanse, they're all antibacterial. So, those things, three to five days post-op, you'll start to notice the dry skin. Now, when you guys get dry skin, it's everywhere. It'll be your hands, it'll be your legs, it'll be your feet, it'll be your chest, your back, not just where you had surgery. It'll be all over. If you're starting to notice that dry skin, super dry everywhere, you need to change your soap because the rest of your skin is getting affected by that. So post-op soap, that's what that's for. Um, that being said, before surgery, and while your incisions are wet and leaking, using Dial Dove Hippocleanse, I would never say Dove because even though it's antibacterial, there's way too many chemicals. Dial or Hippocleanse, um, if you're using that, you can use that first and then use our soap afterwards. You don't have to wait until you're done using that stuff to be able to switch. Now, your doctor will not tell you when to switch. Your doctor will not tell you what to use. Recovery is your responsibility. Same thing with the Arnica, same thing with the wound care. They'll tell you you need it, they won't tell you what you need. So I'm telling you what you need. Um, but that being said, before surgery, use the dial or the Hippocleanse. After surgery, at that first shower, you can use the dial and the Hippocleanse and then use our stuff after to treat your skin. Our post-op soap is not just a regular body wash. It can be used as a regular body wash. I use it every night, because it's wonderful, um, but, you don't have to just use it as like, okay, I'm washed, I'm done. Use it as a body treatment post-op. Take a pump of that foam like I show you in the video and soak your incision with it. Get that incision area clean. Now, fun fact, Steri Strips. I'm gonna do a video on Steri Strips next week. 
or maybe this week. Um, Steri strips or that like tape that they put across your incision after a tummy tuck, you guys gotta be cleaning that stuff um, because there's adhesive. And if it's in your garment, your body's heating up and that adhesive slides and you get little pieces of dead skin on there or you get pieces of like fabric or whatever, lint, whatever, that's gonna be sitting on your body next to your incision that's trying to heal. We wanna make sure that is clean. So making sure that you're using a handful of that foam and cleaning around your Steri strips and cleaning over it to make sure that you're getting everything clean is super important, little fun fact. So post-op soap. So the three major things, which is what we call our trifecta, um, is the post-op soap, the wound care, and the arnica. So how do we use it? Well, when you can shower, right? So that's dependent on your doctor. Like I said, we build off of that. It's dependent on your doctor. When you go to shower, if you're doing a sponge bath situation, you can absolutely start using our uh, soap and do a little sponge bath thing and clean yourself off with that because you're still getting that arnica treated. You're still getting that aloe on your skin treated from the soap. So if you can't get directly in the shower because you have drains, then you can do it that way. Um, using that soap first in the shower and then coming out. And then number two is protect your incisions. So whatever incisions you have, either a hole from your drain or um, little stitch area, whatever it is, use the wound care, mix it with a little bit if you have antibacterial ointment and put that on there, coat it, make sure it's nice and you know healed and sealed and everything's in there soaking in. And then the rest of your skin everywhere else on your body. So again, the more skin you cover using that post-op Arnica cream, the better. And this is why I say, guys, the store-bought stuff is not gonna be enough. So for you to get the dose that you need of the Arnica in the gel or the cream, that white tube, you'd have to use the whole tube all over your body and you'd run through that $20 tube in a day. You'd be covering every inch of skin you can to get as much of that in your body as you can. You're gonna blow through that tube. So ours is a whole jar and that should last you through your recovery if you're using it right. How to use that, I have the video on it. You can go back and watch that. But using that Arnica to make sure that you're getting your skin treated, it's getting into your body, not just sitting on your skin, covering every inch of skin head to toe that is not an incision. Those are your three things. The soap, the wound care, the Arnica. Now. Let's talk about garment and foams. A lot of doctors will give you a garment or a binder. We already talked about this whole garment issue in several other videos. If you guys have trouble with your garments, set up a virtual with me and we'll look at your options. Um, but not every garment is made for every surgery. Not Binders are not a long-term thing. Boards, depending on what surgery you had, are not a long-term thing. They're too rough on your body post-op. Garments, again, they can be super, super tight, they can be super, super loose, or they could just not be cut for your surgery properly. If they're cut too straight and you had a BBL fat transfer to the hips, it's gonna crush the fat transfer. If they're too tight, if there's a zipper, if there's an opening at the bottom, but it's a zipper or the opening's not cut right, you're not gonna be able to go to the bathroom a lot. You're gonna have to be taking it off all the time. So a garment is a supply that every surgery needs, but it's very surgery specific. So that you can set up a virtual with me for and we can discuss that whole issue. But no matter what garment you have, the foam and the board situation. Again, guys, boards should not be a long-term thing. Boards are not the greatest. We at MRA do not believe in boards. We believe in proper lipo foam. If you have the proper lipo foam, you will have the support the same way a board would give you, but that's actually doing something for your lymph system and speeding up your body's acceleration of absorbing that fluid. That's what our foams are meant for, is to help your body get stimulated to suck the swelling back so you can pee it out. Boards just push into your body. Our foams push away from your body, protecting you from the garment, making sure that your skin is getting some sort of stimulation from that foam so that your lymph system starts pumping a little bit better and protecting you and cushioning you so when you move and things like that it's a lot more comfortable and you're not getting cut into by the garment or the board so lipo foams if you guys have foam that is collapsing underneath you if you have foam that when you squeeze it you can feel your fingers in between it's not doing enough if you have sponge like that big thick piece of sponge that's going to be too big it's going to push into your body getting yourself proper lipo foams. Now, here's the other thing. The sponge, the board, the backboard, I can't attest to cleaning any of that. But our lipo foams are fully machine washable, cold water only, cold air only in the dryer, delicate cycle for both with our disinfectant detergent. So that's the other thing, washing your garment and foams, the detergent. You need to make sure you're using something that's chemical free and that's meant for disinfecting, not just washing in the washing machine, but actually disinfecting, guys. These are medical grade garments. They're 
lipo foams, they're, you're dealing with a lot, you wanna make sure they're completely clean through and through, especially if you have incisions that are open and leaking. You wanna make sure that you're cleaning those. Yes, peroxide will get the stain out but disinfecting the foam through and through. Memory foam will soak up all that bacteria. Our polyurethane foams are clean, clean completely through and through. They are completely washable. So you can get the whole thing disinfected and cleaned properly by washing it. So making sure that you have something that you can clean properly, but is also working for you, not pushing against you. So the lipo foams, I'll do a whole nother video on that. Um, but the foams, the garment, your little trifecta for your showering. Um, if you had a BBL, BBL pillow. I have a whole video on BBL pillow and why you need a proper one. That's also something you need to be looking out for. Um, there are lots of other things that people will try to sell you like the avocado for your BBL to sleep in, which is extremely uncomfortable and puts horrible pressure on your back. And if you had lipo, it's gonna really hurt your stomach. Um, the chair, the BBL chair, there's like all this extra stuff out there. The little like band that holds your drains, that whole thing, you don't need all of it. If you want it and you wanna try it, you can spend money on it and that's fine. The only things you really need for any surgery is the post-op body wash, the wound care, the Arnica cream. Those are the three main things. Lipo foams and a proper garment. Those are the other two things. Just because they're called lipo foams doesn't mean you can't use them for a tummy tuck to line your garment. So any garment you have, you can put those foams in for cushion. Now, even if it's a bad garment, it's still gonna help protect you from the garment, make it way more comfortable, and start stimulating your lymph fluid, even if it's not an Amare garment. The Amare garments are cut and designed to use and fit with the lipo foams perfectly. Can't speak for anybody else's garment though. <laughs> but you can use them the same way you would buy a random piece of foam on Amazon and put them in your garments, try and cushion you. Can't say if they're washable, can't say if they're disinfectable, can't say if they're gonna work for you to stimulate lymph fluid, um, because I don't know what kind of material they're made out of. Ours are made of a very specific material that helps with that. So proper foams for no matter what garment you have, making sure anywhere that you had lipo, you're lining with that foam. Proper lipo foams to protect you and start stimulating the lymphatic fluid. Um, that's really the starter kit. Again, like I said, if you had a BBL, you might wanna get a BBL pillow. Um, they do have extra things out there like that female urinal that you can use, but if you have a proper garment that has a nice big hole that goes front to back, you should have no trouble having a bowel movement or going to the bathroom at all. If you do, the whole of your garment probably isn't cut right or you're not putting your garment on right. And I'm gonna do a video on that next week too. There is a proper way to put your garment on so everything lines up exactly where it should. So if the whole of your garment in the bottom isn't lining up properly, if you are struggling to rip your garment on, you're probably putting it on wrong to begin with because a garment is meant to be laid on the body in the position that it needs to stay. So if you're trying to pull it up like yoga pants, if you're trying to like rip at the garment, if you're trying to like pull on the straps, it's gonna fight you back, it's not gonna fit right, and that hole isn't gonna line up right. So I'll do that video later. But the basics that you need, wound care, again, wound care, cleanser, post-op body wash, wound care, post-op body wash, arnica cream. Those are like your three basics for any surgery for the healing process, proper garment, and lipo foams. Lipo foams definitely for any surgery you had to cushion whatever garment you have. If you have trouble finding a garment, give me a call. We'll help with that. BBL pillow if you had BBL. Um, and that's really it. Those are the basics that you need. Everything else is surgery specific. I will be doing specific videos on what surgery you had, what supplies you need, and why you need them, and where to get them, and how to get them properly, and things like that. So those will be coming up soon, but I hope this was helpful. All of those items are available in our post-op shop. The link is in our bio. I will also put it in the comment section of this video um, so that you guys can get your supplies. And if you have questions specific to your surgery, if you need to be fitted for a garment, um, anything like that, questions for me specifically, set up a virtual. Call our office, 732-924-1858, and we can help get you set up. So guys, have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you soon.